In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In the presence Troubles 
Hallelujah. 
for the symbol and the tinkerings and all the other things. Yeah. But whether they're there or not, there has to be a time of worship and praise. Yes. There has to be a time of worship and praise. Yes. We get so used to having Sister Natalie push us with the song and the music that we let our guard down. Come on. I'm going to tell on y'all. There are times Sister Natalie is broken because she is pouring her heart out in song and, and she was here, she'd give me that, that stink eye right now. But I'm just going to tell on you. She is broken because she is pouring herself out, singing under the praises of God and worshiping with every fiber she can, playing that piano. And she looks out over there and some of y'all are picking your teeth. Some of y'all are yawning real big. Listen, you're that tired. Get up out of your seat and do something for Jesus. Yes. Amen. You're, you're that weary. Get up out of your seat and do something for the Because we can't do this alone. Listen, I didn't come to church just to minister. I came to church to be ministered to. And part of that is your worship and your praises. That lifts me up. That encourages me. That helps me be what I need to be for your purpose, for your business. Amen. Help us help you. Praise God. That goes from the usher in the back. Listen, I tell these ushers, quit, I don't care. Just quit standing back there all the time. Get up here and worship. Get up here and pray. Why? Because if they're not doing it, there's part of us still missing. I want to be the whole body of Christ, not just a, a couple of chunks floating around. Amen. And I didn't even start preaching yet. So. Come on. Come on. That was great. Ain't God good? I said, ain't God good? Remember that old song, Ain't God Good, to give us so many blessings undeserving. That's what we are. Y'all are terrible. Ain't God good to give us so many blessings undeserving. That's what we are. I want to thank Him. Love and praise Him live more today and a whole lot more tomorrow. Well, ain't God good to give my soul many blessings undeserving. That's what we are. You want to thank Him. Love and praise Him live more today. And a whole lot more tomorrow. Well, ain't God good, ain't God good to give us so many blessings undeserving. That's what we are. We come to praise Him. Little more today, and a whole lot more tomorrow. You believe that? Give it thanks. Hallelujah. Praise God. God's so good. He's so, so good. Amen. Amen. God bless you. As, a, as the teachers take the Sunday school classroom down, God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Have a great time in the Lord. Amen. Listen, our young people are absolutely lifeblood. Amen. We want them to be blessed. We want them to be encouraged. We want them to, to be a part of the service. I, I love seeing these. Madison kids coming up here praying at the altar and praying with the adults and praying for the adults. Amen. Praise God. That's the way it ought to be. Amen. Amen. The Robert used to come up all the time as well. He lay hand for Brother Alfonso had more of Brother Robert's hands put on him than he held his mother's hand. I'll tell you right now. He always come up and lay hands on Brother Alfonso and pray for him. Let me tell you something. That's the way it ought to be. That's the way it needs to be. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Good to see all of you all here today. God's so good. Now, my lovely wife said to tell you she loves all of y'all. I don't know if she's telling the truth, but I'm sharing it anyway. Now, she said she loves y'all. They are in uh, the wonderful state of Texas, visiting with her mother and family. And it is well-deserved and well-needed. Amen? Amen? Amen. Turn with you, with me. <laughs> If you will, this morning to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We're going to start there. We'll also be reading the book of Ephesians. But let's go to 2 Corinthians. Just before Ephesians. 1 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. And then those Philippians come in. And then we're all in trouble. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We're going to start with verse number 3. Verse number 3. 
in Ephesians chapter 10. There's nobody manning that board. They all, unless I give them specific instructions, uh, they just give up their pose. Oh, thank you, Sister Desi, for going back there and doing that. I just seen the ushers kind of doing their thing. So I didn't see anybody back there. Ten and three. Have I got it? Yes, amen. Wow. One of y'all. Amen. All right. Well, as the two of us are together, we're going to have church. Okay, now, <laughs> praise God. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 3 says, But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with, with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some. He's saying, listen, I'm coming, and I've got this boldness just burn up in my gut, and I, I, I need you to pray for me, because when I get there, I really want you to pray. I don't let come out of my mouth what's coming out of my mouth right now, what's coming out of my emotions right now. I, I need you to pray for me because I, I've got some frustration inside of me, and I'm afraid that when I get to you, it's just going to come out like a blah, and you're really going to be upset because I'm upset with you. Right. Amen? So he goes on and he says, listen, I, I, I don't, I don't want to be present with, with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some. He said, it ain't all of you, but some of y'all are in trouble. Right. Which think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. Hey, you think we're walking around doing things just to do them. You think we shout just because we can. You think we run the aisles just because we in the flesh. You think we speak in tongues and say, untie my bow tie, who stole my Honda, just because we're in the flesh. You, you, you think we just get just a little bit too emotional in our flesh, and too, too, too much out of sorts with our flesh. And, and, and I, I need you to pray for me because when I get there, you people that are thinking that way, I've got an issue with, and I just want it to come up out of my soul and just put it right in your face. You know, because Paul was a timid kind of fellow. I wish there was more Pauls. Amen. Amen. He said, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. That is something, let me say this, never in my life have I heard, never in my life have I heard so many people looking at me that are in authority in the front in the church and in the kingdom of God. Never have I heard so many come up and say, uh, I don't believe that all that spiritual warfare stuff is necessary anymore. It rocks the depths of my soul to hear people say, hey, that's just not necessary anymore. If it wasn't necessary, why is it in the word? If it wasn't necessary, why did Christ to say, say that you better have the whole armor? Why did Christ himself talk about how we're going to fight against principality and powers? And why did the disciples ever speak of it? If, if, if there's no spiritual warfare, then, then why do we even talk about a devil? He ain't got no power. He ain't got no authority, right? Wrong. Come on. If he didn't have no power, he didn't have no, no authority, then why is he going like a roaring lion seeking who he made the power? Why is he going and he calls him trouble on earth? The Bible says he calls us trouble to nations, but God, he ain't got no power. Spiritual warfare is over. Come on. See, the problem is, and this is my title, we are wounded by the misuse of our weaponry. I'll say it again. We have been wounded by the misuse of our weaponry. I'm going to keep reading. Casting down, he says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Everybody say, my weapons are not carnal. My weapons are not carnal. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Finish it up. Go ahead and say that. Strong. Thank you, Sister Sheila. Casting down imaginations on every high thing. You know those dirty thoughts you got? I'm just going to hit home. You know them dirty thoughts you got? The Bible says you got to pull those things down and get them under control. you got to stop those things under. I know they rise up because your flesh rises up. That's why we're on a 31-day prayer and fast. Why? Because we got to get this old flesh in order. I understand. I'm still a man whether I want to be or not in that capacity. I'm still a man in temptations still try to come and snare the man but it is my God fearing side it is my father's side that rises up in me and says I shall not be moved I will stand upon my rock I will fulfill the word of God I will do all that my God has asked of me and I will not give in to 
that temptation. Listen, more and more advertisement after advertisement. You can I, I noticed just yesterday my entire Facebook page changed. I've got advertisement I've never seen before. I, I've got pop-ups I've never gotten before. And most of them have somebody that forgot their clothing or forgot something. And oh I, it's all about the clone I'm wearing. Yeah. Well, where'd you put your clothes with your clone? Yeah. Yes, amen. Yeah. What happened to this commercial? Yeah. Right. You missed me on that one. Sorry. Yeah. You know, and, and why's that one got to be with that one? And why's that one got to be all over that one? Just so you can say, look, new curdled cottage cheese. Yeah. 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 Come on. Curdled cottage cheese apparently eats your clothing. <laughs> I ain't touching the stuff. <laughs> and let's face it, there's some things you don't want to see. Yeah. Me neither. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because the Bible says we're supposed to put holy things before our eyes, righteous things before our eyes. It says we're supposed to turn away from evil. We're supposed to turn away from darkness. We're supposed to turn away from perversion. I'm not saying you're not struggling. I'm saying you have the power and the authority to overcome with the weaponry that God has appointed, anointed, and given you. Don't tell me you can't. I know you've fallen sometimes. I know, I know you feel like you fell and you might as well just quit walk away. And then the, the, the people are spinning on you and God's going to turn his back on you. But I serve a God who said if you'll repent from your sins and return from your wicked way, that he will hear and he will cry out under, under heaven and he'll bring healing to the land. That means he brings healing to you. He brings healing to your household. He brings healing to your generations upon generation. Don't you sit there with a frown on your face and say it's too late. My God said it ain't so. My God said until I come back and take my people, nothing's too late. Praise me to God. I'm going to Casting down imaginations of every high thing. You know the things that lifted themselves up above you and said they got power and authority and appointment above you. Y'all can sit down if you want. I'm going to go. You can stand if you want. You ain't hurt my feelings. But I am going to get a drink of water and make you watch me. Praise God. He said, in high things exalted itself against the knowledge of God. What? Well, you know, when the world starts saying, you don't have to do that. You just do whatever you want to. If it feels good, do it. If he was really God, he'd love you and just love you the way you are. He does love you the way you are. He loves you so much that he looks at the way you are and he says, listen, I made you for better. I made you for greater. I made you for holiness. I made you for righteousness. I made you for truth. I made you for purity. I made you for God and sincerity. Why is it they look at us, sister, and they say, that's holiness, and I want to be like that. And what's different about them? Why is it they want to take our girls home to mama and daddy to meet them, but they want to take everybody else to the bed? I'm on sugar coating this morning, brother. We all right? Praise God. I'll tell you why. Because when you present your body a holy vessel, when you present your body, he said, be ye holy, for I am holy. He didn't sugarcoat it. He didn't tear it out. He didn't terrorize it. He didn't foolish it. He said, listen, you want to be like I made you to be, you be holy. And when you're holy, I'll connect you with greatness. I'll connect you with purity. I'll connect you with perfection. I'll connect you with all the things you need. But we get caught up in our own emotion. Yes. You ever run somebody that likes to pick fights all the time? Yeah. I want to go and flick them people in the nose. <laughs> I just want to walk up and say, listen, I'm going to give you some marital counseling. Hold still. Yeah. <laughs> Knock it off. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Why? Because everything is a disagreement. You can look and say, oh, the skies are beautiful blue. Well, I wouldn't necessarily say it was blue. Man, look at those beautiful clouds where there's only three or four. What are you looking at? The clouds. I said that phrase. Look at the beautiful clouds. So I wasn't talking about the squirrel. 
You ever been around those people? Come on, Pastor. They're not satisfied with anything. You know why they're not satisfied with anything? Because they let go of God. Come on, yes. Right. Or they've never known Him the way He wants them to know Him. Amen. They're dissatisfied with everything. They hate everything. They disagree with everything. Every time you say it's blue, no, it's purple. Every time you say, yeah, it's purple, they said, no, it's brown. Why are you acting stupid for it? You said it was blue. Now you're saying it. Listen, why is it you got to argue with me every time I, something comes out of my mouth? If you're supposed to love me and want to be with me, how about you actually be with me instead of your opinion of me, your vision of me, or your desire of me? How about I be what God made me to be? And you can either lie upon it or you can step up. You can either get right where God wants us to be or you can get out my way. Because I'm not losing my salvation for you. I'm not losing my love for you. I'm not missing out on God. You know why you're hurt though? Because, because you've been wounded by the misuse of your weaponry. You see, God called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I say that all the time. And I used to never say that. People say, well, why do you say it all the time? Because I'm trying to get into your Abdullah Abdullah God. I'm trying to get you to understand. You're either going to step up and be the vessel of God and think on these things, or you're going to think on unrighteousness, and then you're going to fall and fail, and then suddenly everybody else will meet you. You know what the problem is? You got your vision so distracted you fell on your own sword saw. You fell on your own sword. Yeah. And you're blaming everybody else for your wounds. Right, yes. You're blaming everybody else for your brokenness. Yes. You, you're blaming everybody else for, for the, 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 the back and forth and the hemorrhaging of your relationships and the hemorrhaging of your walk with God and, and the hemorrhaging of your prayer life. And, 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 and God is saying, I'm not going anywhere, I'm right there. I'm not going anywhere, I'm right there. I'm not going anywhere, I'm right there. And if you just step in and say, yes, Lord, I'll commit, I'm back, I'm here, whatever it is you got to be, whatever. Listen, you can sit in the pew and be as backslid as backslid can be. I'm giving you an invitation today to quit letting the misuse of your weaponry hold you and start walking in righteousness. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience. <laughs> when your obedience is fulfilled. Ooh, what does that mean? He's saying, you know that moment when you get drawn into disobedience? The moment you come into obedience, you take revenge on it. You think, devil, I'm going to lay down and take that? Watch whenever I throw out these false idols from my home. Watch when I correct my walk. Watch, watch when I correct my stance. When everybody else is put, put fingers at me and say, hypocrite, hypocrite, hypocrite. That's all right with me. As long as I know I'm serving God. As long as I know I'm walking the path. As long as I know I'm doing what God called me, called me, and chose me to do. I'm all right with it. You know what? I'm going to be honest with you. I backslid once. To horrible circumstances in my life. And now looking back, I realize, since none of those were worthy of my backslide. But at the time, I felt like the whole world was there to smash me like a bug. Yeah. I thought I had this strong exterior shell, you know, like an ant. <laughs> Don't you worry, because I already felt like I was carrying my 20 times heavier than me. Yeah. And I was carrying everybody else's too. Yeah. Come on. Come on. And people would just look at me. You okay, brother? Yeah, I'm fine. All right, brother, we'll pray for you. Are you kidding me, you hypocrite? Yeah. Where's your spiritual eyes? Right. Don't ask me if I'm okay when you know I'm broken. Get in there and ask me how to help my brokenness. Get in there and ask what loads you can take off my plate. Get, 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 get in there and help me make it through to heaven and get whatever it is that I've been carrying and burdened and, and troubled with and, and, and help me get on the other side of holiness where I ought to be. The other side of righteousness where I ought to be. 
but the other side of a pure mind and a pure heart, where I had a pure tongue and a pure lips, a pure vessel, where I ought to be. See, church, you better be careful because you're justifying somebody broken when really they're wounded by the misuse of their, their weaponry. Instead of having shield of faith. Amen. Right. Where the enemy's fiery darts can't get in. Amen. We're tired. Yeah. I'll just use it to lean on. Come on. Oh. Come on. Oh. Come on. Well, it's just going to have to be that way now. The devil's just going to have to get through because I don't oh. have the strength. Oh. Oh. I don't have the energy. Oh. My God, I wish there were really intercessors praying for me. My God, I wish there was a ministry team that had enough guts and had enough spine and had enough backbone to help me get through this. But instead, they're watching me limp by and they're giving me one of those cheesy fake smiles, pats on the back. Good to see you. Oh, we love you. You love me. Do something for me. Don't you look. You know, I hear that all the time. If you love me, do something for me. Don't you tell me you love me and watch me fail. Yes. I won't. Oh, ah. Man, I cut myself with that. One of them darts that I had blocked years ago. Oh, I remember that man. I was on fire for God. I was, I was, oh, oh, it was a beautiful day. I remember that day. If I could only have days like that before. Come on. You know, when you had days like that, when you, when you wore the uniform with pride and instead of telling God he needed to alter a little bit of this and change a little bit of that. Amen. Yeah, come on. Yeah. God, this, this shield's a little heavy. Can you shorten it? <coughs> I think I'm fast enough. Come on. Yeah. This helmet's a little cumbersome. It hurts my neck. Come on. Can you make it out of <laughs> Maybe some tin. Tin's really light. How about this sword, man? Can you just make it a dagger and they get close? I'll get them. But, I mean, if they're far away, you're God. You're supposed to deal with it, right? Let me tell you something. To use a dagger, stand up, brother. To use a dagger, I gotta get close. That's right. Right. To use a sword. That's right. Come on. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. See, your your problem was you're using the wrong weaponry. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And you're wounding yourself. Because yeah. if you get this close to use a dagger, he can get that close to use a dagger. That's right. That's right. But if you've got a sword and you've got a proper shield, you can get there. Oh, that's right. You understand? Yes. God knew what you needed when he made you. He knew what instruments and what weaponry, what tool. He didn't know what value you had and he knew your ability to fight. Some of you forgot God is your armor bearer. Oh, we want everybody else. Come here. Come on. Be my armor. Hurry. Run. 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 Come on. Get your sword up, man. Get your sword up. Come on. Come on. Everywhere I go, he goes. Everywhere I go, he goes. Everywhere I go, he goes. Come on. You know, because we sense each other. We can Come push. On. We can shove. Whatever it is. People are like, you look like fools. I'd rather look like a fool for Christ and be protected than not. Because you know what the armor of Christ doesn't have a fullback. Because there ain't no retreat in the kingdom. Right. There ain't no retreat in the kingdom. So we expect men to be our armor bearer. But brother, men will fail us. Ladies, men will fail us. We're not perfect. I'm sorry. If you came here looking for a perfect pastor, let me know if you find him because I need counsel. Amen. Because yes. Yes. we're not perfect. We're just blessed. We're just, we, we fight hard. Why? Because there's more on the line than just me and my family. You want to know why our daughters and our sons are hurt? Because we're out fighting for you and they feel like we're failing them at home. Come on. Come on. Man, I'm just... Come on. Come on. I'm a bad kicker. <laughs> they suffer brokenness they never can. And you know what they hear at home? Suck it up. Go pray. Is that what you just told the saint you left? Come on. Come on now. Come on. 
Is that what you just told the man you just left? The, the marriage you just left? The, 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 the drug over an addict that you just left? The alcoholic you just left? The, the wife abuser? The husband abuser you just left? Oh, you're going to touch on that, that. That woman that beats her husband. Yeah, when well, you're a coward, you're a coward no matter what. You're male or female. That's right, amen. Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean, coward? Cowards can't control their temple, so they take it out. They can't control yeah. somebody, so they beat them into submission. Yeah. I don't care if they're male or female. If they're picking up a fist to you, they ain't a God, and they're not right. There is immature as immature gets. And I'm here to tell you, it's time to grow up already. It's time to mature already. Look around. You don't see a bunch of little kids in here, do you? It's, it's, it's all the people that ought to be in here. When Robert's in here, man, he's smarter than all y'all put together. Amen. Yes. I noticed I was in there too. Listen, there's a man named Albert Sidney Johnson. Albert Sidney Johnson was a colonel in the Civil War for these United States of America. Have you ever heard of him? No. Because he was an idiot. <laughs> oh, he, he had some battles. If you look him up, there are some battles he's known for. But his last lasting impression on God's green earth was this. While fighting in a duel, a duel, he Made it through the war. But while fighting in a, a duel, I won the war. Oh, wait, we, we failed. I was Confederate. But I didn't get killed. But how we go out to a duel? Because I forgot how big and bad I was. Mm -hmm. yeah. And draw guns after 10 paces and shoot at each other. Yeah. In this duel, he walks up, he turns, he fires, he misses, and a bullet comes and hits him in the leg. And he's down. One of the fellow ex-soldiers comes up, oh, Colonel, and he grabs him and he drags him over to a tree. What he didn't know is when the, when the bullet hit, the bullet went through him and hit another gentleman behind him. And when he seen him, he was, he was just in despair. And he hollered out and he said, Go! Don't tend to me. My wound is going to take my life. And the guy tending to him was a doctor. He said, No, just let me look at your wound. He said, No, I feel in my gut this is a terminal wound. Go tend to the other gentleman. The doctor said, listen, let me do my job. This is what I'm trained for. This is what I do. Come on. He said, then do what I'm asking you to do. I'm going to die because of this wound. Yeah. I know I am. I feel it. Go and tend to the man that was wounded. So he went over and tended to the man who was wounded. And it had hit a major artery and he was already dead. By the time he had went over and tended to him and did everything he could to try to save that man's life, he went back over to the colonel. And sadly enough, the colonel bled to death. No big deal, it happens, right? Except an autopsy had been done after his death because the surgeon realized he had bled out very slowly didn't make sense. The other gentleman died very quickly, no matter what he did, no matter what he tried, he just bled to death. But the colonel bled out very slowly. He was thinking, maybe there were internal hemorrhaging, or maybe there was something internal I missed. Maybe there's got to be some reason he died foolishly. Well, I, I would say, well, you were doing and that, that will do it, but that's not what the doctor said. 
The doctor opened him up and he did an autopsy. And he looked at the wound. And he stepped back, though he was surrounded by many other students that was also learning the medical practice. And he stepped back and he wiped his brow and he said, you have got to be kidding me. And when he did it, he leaned and his clothing of the colonel had just been to his side. And when he leaned, he fell. And he opened it up and he pulled out an item. And when he pulled it down, they thought he had had a heart attack because he just fell to his knees and fell over. And he began to wipe, weep uncontrollably. And they said, what is wrong with you? Get up out of the floor. What, you're making a mockery. Get up. The students are trying to figure out what's going on. What is wrong with you? He said, my friend, my friend died of a wound that was not fatal. And more importantly, in his pocket was the very item that would have saved his life. And I could have treated every, I could have, I could have treated a battlefield of wounded and come back to him and he would have lived. Because the wound, though it bled, was not in a fatal position. It had hit no artery. It had hit no major anything. It was just a wound in the flesh that was bleeding. Had he put the tourniquet in his pocket on his wound, he would have lived a long and prosperous life. But because he chose not to use the tools of his weaponry. Sometimes you think your life is over. Sometimes you think you need to throw in the towel. You need, you need to just say, I'm never getting to heaven. I'm, never, I'm, I'm not getting anywhere. Sometimes the enemy sees you carrying that weight and wants you to use your shield as a crutch. Wants you to take off that hat because you're tired and weary. I want you to lay that sword down because it keeps hitting the middle of your back every time you take a step. And you're limping your way through life. And God says, I've got the thing to heal your spiritual bleeding. I've got the very thing to heal your spiritual bleeding. I've got the very thing that I'll allow you to live a long, prosperous, God, God loving, anointed, appointed life. Here, God is not giving up on you. God has not failed you. God is not wandering in the wilderness, wondering where you are. He's been there the whole time. He's waiting the whole time. He's trusting you. I will submit to you, it is not easy to waive my trust. It's not. I've had people in my life that did absolutely absurd things. And when everybody else said, shut them off, I said, never, we're going to do it again. Come on. Tell them, tell them, it. no, we're going to do it again. Come on. I thought you were a pastor, I am, and I'm going to do it again. Yeah. I've had people look at me and say, I need to take power, go ahead. You want to run things right? Well, nobody will follow me, who knew? Because you can't walk up in here and demand power. you got to let God give you power. You can't demand somebody follow you. they got to be willing to follow you. But you got to be a better leader than they are a follower. And sometimes leadership means being so full of God's mercy and grace that everybody else points the fingers at you. What are you doing? Why are you, oh, you ain't. You can't be no man of God. You can't be no woman of God. Why? Because you've forgotten how to use your weaponry. And I'm using the weaponry God told me to use. Yes, amen. Amen. 
The scripture goes on, verse 8, for, for though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord hath given us for edification, and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed. Come on. That I may not seem as if I would terrify you by letters. Yeah. Hey, I'm not sitting to intimidate you. I'm not doing this to intimidate you, to worry you, to frustrate you. I can hear it now because it's been said about me. I can hear it now. Great. Here comes Paul. Now Paul's coming. See what you did? Yeah. Now we're going to have more division. And, and, and he not coming just to point you out. He, he's coming to talk to all of us because of you. I would to God somebody would come talk to all of us. I would to God unless somebody needed singled out. God would speak to everybody. And we would be the vessels he could speak to. I would to God he would show love like he, you know, we would show love like he has showed love to us. I, I would to God we could show mercy like he has shown mercy to us. Well, it's not ours to give. You're the bride. Why is it everybody wants to act like the woman until it comes to the bride? Right? It's the bride's wedding. Whatever she wants. Whatever dress she wants. Whatever flowers she wants. Whatever shoes we have to wear. Whatever dumb cummerbund we have to put on. Yeah, we're going to wear the aqua and mob shirts. I don't understand it. I don't get it. They are ugly, but that's what she wants. You're like, nobody ever do that. Oh, yes, they will. <laughs> if I got to wear another burgundy something, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> teal. Oops, teal. Because yeah. nobody uses teal. <laughs> what are you talking about, preacher? I could read all the way down like I was going to to verse number 13. But we will not boast of the things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God hath distributed to us, a measure to reach even unto you. Come on. God's measured you to. Need a shield this size. Come on. Need a sword that size. Come on. Oh, needs a helmet. And they're growing spiritually, so we're going to upgrade the helmet. Yeah. Right. They're fighting bigger battles. We're going to we're going to upgrade that sword. That's good. Come on. Oh, those feet. We got to get the, we got to get the right ones on there. Come on. Got to make sure they're shod with the preparation of the gospel. Yes. And we got to make sure that breastplate can withstand, God forbid, if one, even one of those arrows get through. You ever done that study? See, we look at the shield all the time because it quenches the fire darts of the devil, right? Yeah. Of the enemy, right? What's the shield for? What's the breastplate for? So the shield of faith, the shield. So when your faith fails, what's the breastplate for? You know, the breastplate of righteousness. See, when your faith is low, your righteousness should be able to withstand the fire of darts too. We don't want to talk about that because righteousness is tied to that holiness stuff. Yeah, amen. Holiness ain't just what you dress like. Holiness is what you think like, walk like, chew like, spit like. Whatever it is you got to like, that's what it's all about. So you're right, even though the enemy might get past your face sometimes. Even though your faith is weak and weary, and maybe they need help. Come on. Amen. I hate Facebook. I use it as a tool. But I hate it. Oh, they'll kick us off now. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> you know why I hate it? 
since you just shared a post, what was the sister's name? Please pray. Oh, sister Ryan Hart. Ryan. Sister Ryan Hart needs prayer. Praying. Yeah. When? Speak on it. Come on. When did you pray? Yeah. Oh, I know. I know. When it's about your family, you expect us to get the altar and get all the intercessors together and cry and scream and bawl and snot and water until God does a miracle. But your miracle for them is Jesus touch them. Speak on it. Yeah. 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 What happened to your weaponry? You forgot how to swing the sword. You forgot how to raise it. You forgot how to step in front of your brother or your sister and raise that sword. And drop it. You forgot how to get on your knees and pray. You forgot. You forgot how to hold up with the breastplate of righteousness and say, you need my shield for a while. Take it. Because yeah. I got enough mustard seeds for both of us. We're not moving mountains. We're moving nations. Whoa. We're called to move nations, not just mountains. When Christ told us to move on the, the, the mountain, he said, listen, if you have a, 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 a mustard seed, a single solitary mustard seed. Yes, come on. Seeing that vial? No, nobody does. Come on. Amen. One single mustard seed. I can move a mountain. Yeah. Now, your mountain might look like a hill in your backyard. Mine looks like the tallest mountain on the planet, which is under the ocean. Yeah. I'll be moving things, boys and girls. Yes. Praise Amen. Yes. yes. But if one, God called this church to be a church for, for nations. Hallelujah. Yes. God called this church to be a church to reach and minister yes. to and love and, and brought forth in, in, into nations. Yes. Declare it. Yeah. Yes. It's your vision. Your vision is like, oh God, right there it is, Lord. Come on. I don't know what to do, Lord. This ant hill is so big. Come on. 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 Need anything else? Yeah. Come, Come on. on. They might re nest. All right. <laughs> Come on. Woo. Come on down. Come on. Where's the twig? Praise God. Yeah. Yes. Need anything else? Come on. Yeah. Come on. Well, no, not that you did it that way. I mean, I could have did that. Yeah, why didn't you? Come on. Right. Amen. Come on. Amen. Why didn't you? Don't tell me what's going on in your life is bigger than you. Come on. Come on. Come on. We failed two times with our weaponry. Two ways. On. Number one, we fail by not telling anybody else and trying to do it all by ourselves. Yes, yes. That's true. I got this. No, you don't. Because right. if you had had it, you would have had it a long time ago. That's right. yeah. 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 You just got, 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 got God made you a special way. So don't tell me you got it when you don't. Amen. You ready for number two? Yeah. You don't ask anybody for help. Come on. I got this. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, looking good. Yeah. Praying for you. Yeah. Come on. Talk about it. That's good. Come on. See, you misuse the weapons. You're trying to use your breastplate as a shield. Wow. So then you all get stubborn. You try and use that. The helmet of. I'm saved, devil! Oh. I said I'm saved! Uh -huh. Look at that! Don't make me headbutt you. Yeah. You ever headbutted somebody? Anybody says, oh, the headbutt only hurts somebody else. Yeah, You've yeah. never headbutted anybody. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Come on. 
When I was a kid, I was running around on a playground. I came around the corner of a brick building. So did Joe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My head hurt. Yeah. Oh, my head hurt. Yeah. Yeah. We started looking for Joey's teeth. <laughs> Found one. Don't jump back. Yeah. <laughs> quit, quit. You shouldn't run into me. Yeah. I'm hurt too. Yes. I'll be honest with you. It's not that you can't do what I'm about to say. It's that you're on the other, other side of this. It's not that you can't do all things through Christ who strengthens you. But notice, to do it, he has to strengthen you. Right. Yes. That means you have to submit it to him for strength. Oh. Right. Oh. Oh. Good, Pastor. Come on. Yeah. As a father, his sister doesn't need gasoline in a car and she doesn't have any money. Yeah. She doesn't go. My dad should know. Come on. Right. Come on. I don't know what his problem is. <laughs> He knows I buy a lot of clothes and I don't have gas money. <laughs> I bought him Chick-fil-A. He knows I ain't got no money. Come on. That's good. No, she has to say that. Listen, I need gas in the car. My first response is going to be, put gas in the car. <laughs> That's why she doesn't come to ask me, because I'm going to ask the audience. Instead, she's mom. And she does, she does this, mom. <laughs> but she should know at any time, Dad, I need gas money. All right, we'll get you. What do you need? I know it's not $200, so I'm sorry. <laughs> That's clothing, okay? No, no. <laughs> Let's go up to the gas station together. I gotta get gas to fill these things up. Yeah. Yeah. I only need a little bit. Let's fill these things up. Come on. Right. Yes. Yes. Come on, Come on. I just need enough for the look in the window. Let's fill this thing up. Come on. Yes. Come on, amen. Make sure you got what you need. Amen. Why is it you think God's gonna give you just a little bit to help you almost get by? He's got it all provided. He's got it all laid out. He's got it all planned. You just have to ask. And some of us don't know how to use a sword. I'm not a fighter. I'm a lover. No, you're an idiot. I'm sorry. I know I sugarcoated just then. Why would you go into battle and say, don't kill me. I'm a lover. I'm a fighter. Come on. Come on, Richard. They didn't come into battle to sugarcoat it and kiss you on the, on the cheek. Come on. That's all right, brother. I, I love you. <laughs> yeah. We can be friends. Come on, that's right. Yeah. Oh. You read some of the brutality some of these people did in the Bible. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. yeah. Have you been on the streets lately? Mm -hmm. Come on. Have you gone to Louisville? <laughs> Have you gone to Jeff? Come on. We've had four murders in Charlestown in the last three months. Yeah. Come on. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. was Jesus. Seven pedophiles put away. Come on. Yeah. It's warfare. Come on. Trafficking, human trafficking, not just children, adults. Yeah. Yeah. A lady walked into Home Depot just the other day. Uh -huh. And she noticed two men automatically get on their phone and start following. And the one man said, yeah, hey, listen, I, I've got a, I've got a, a red-headed heifer and a baby calf. You want them? Come on. She knew they wasn't talking about no animals. Yeah, no, no, no. The, 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 the heifer's probably about 20, a number 25. The calf's probably, I don't know, a five or six. She's about 25 and her baby girl's five or six. Come on. Come on. 
You think it ain't happening? You're out your mind. Here, wait, in our quaint little city. Uh -huh. People from here. Happening all over. Yes. All over. They, they just busted school teachers and counselors Come on. Yeah. in Florida. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on. Some of them kids that come across the border, they don't know where they went. Yeah. And when interviewed, when the government official was interviewed, mm -hmm. could some of these places, how does this happen? We just call a phone number and they come and pick the child up. Yeah. Well, how do you say? How do you make sure they're okay? We call them and say, "This child, are they still with you? And is everything okay?" Yes. Right. Are you out your mind? And then the government official said, "And we know, we know, some of these are actually human trafficking and human prostitution rings." Yeah. Wait a minute. Did you? Did you just say you sent children yeah. mm -hmm. to the people with that phone number? Mm -hmm. Yes. Why? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, no, no. I don't. Matter of fact, you should be prosecuted and, yes. and, and, and go to. Absolutely. Yeah. Come on, all right. Yes. Come on. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I know some fathers you need to be in a room with right now. Uh, I know some mothers you need to be in a room with right now because uh, they're going to show you the weapons of their warfare pretty fast. <laughs> Not the weapons we're talking about this morning. Go ahead, mess with me. Yeah. Mess with the little one. You mess with somebody's wife now. Pray for you. Yeah. Won't be suddenly, but I'll be laying hands. <laughs> I'll do it righteously. Uh -huh. You understand what I'm saying? I'm saying, listen, don't come up here and be a big, big no. Nobody invited you in that capacity. God's inviting you in a capacity that you can actually handle. Yes. 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 I know you're wounded. I know you're broken. I know you stabbed yourself so many times you're trying to figure out if you did it or somebody sitting next to you did it. I get it. I know somebody's accidentally turned and they thought they were doing good, but they smacked you right in the face with that, that shield. Come on. One of them darts scraped your face. You've got some scars and you've got some wounds. Come on. Somebody carelessly acting like they're trying to learn and be the Hercules. Mm -hmm. Come on. Isn't it funny how they're trying to be some false god? Showing you how tough and how bad they are. I gotta teach you how to strengthen your weaponry. I gotta teach you how to sharpen your sword. I gotta teach you how to hold that shield the way it should be. When the Romans were training, they spent two years training on how to hold the shields and where to put them in battle. That's right. Two years. And then you were just the beginning. Because if you couldn't handle your sword, you had no right to handle your shield. Amen. Why, why, why have a shield if you can't actually pick up a sword? Yeah. You had to have the strength. Right. Maybe you're broken now. Maybe, maybe you're wounded now. Maybe, maybe you're trying to figure it out. The reason I told you a little bit ago I backslid once is because I need you to understand yeah somebody's been there yeah. you know gossip is my least favorite thing to hear it's right next to the lie yeah yeah oh, it works me And though the past is under the blood, at least I pray that's where you put it. And the past is under this cleansing blood. And then if you missed that, you came and you repented at an altar and you took communion. Amen. 
I've said for years in this church. I don't care what you did yesterday. I don't care what you did this morning on the way. Or before you were on the way. I want to know who you're going to be right now. I want to know who you're going to be right now. Too late for me, really, you die. I think I blasting the Holy Ghost. Here's the thing about everybody that thinks they have that they blasting the Holy Ghost. If it's just a thought to you, it didn't happen. Well, I can't feel the Holy Ghost anymore. Nah, we're getting close. But if you cry out to God and God's hearing you, the only way it'd be too late is if you decide to walk away. And that's long term. I mean, walk away. Yeah, that's right. So tell me as we stand, I'm close. Here, let's play the music. Mm -hmm. How wounded are you? How wounded are you? I don't know where to go to next without. Let me say it right. Where there's no vision, the people perish. Yes. Yes. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Oh, yes. Amen. Yes. yes. Oh, but we're supposed to be past that law. I don't have time to teach you a whole Bible study and why you're wrong. Yeah. Right. There's more to this. If we are not under some law, then don't quote to me the Ten Commandments. Come on, amen. Come on, God. In Ephesians chapter 6, it starts off with a very important phrase. Children, obey your parents yes. in the Lord. Uh -huh. We always miss that part. The Bible says you're supposed to obey your parent. <laughs> no, you're supposed to be obey your parent in the Lord. In other words, if you're going to serve God, child, and they're not, you serve God and ignore all their ungodly foolishness. Nobody else preaching that right there. Amen. But you should honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Why? You're going to be old if you do that. I apparently am doing that well. I'm old. I pray. Amen. That it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Yes. <laughs> you fathers, don't provoke your children around. Kids love that phrase. You can't make me mad. It did not say that. Yeah. Right. It said wrath. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wrath is hatred with a vengeance. Right. Right. So if you hate them with a vengeance, now you're living in wrath that you have got to repent over. You ain't making it either. Right. You can hate somebody so much you miss heaven. Come on. Amen. It yeah. should not be a part of your vocabulary or a part of your life. It says, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. In other words, teach them the ways, the love, the goodness, the promises of the Lord. Amen. Spare the rod, spoil the child. Yep. See, we get quiet. We just say, come on. Y'all said amen to the other part. <laughs> Servants. We don't want to talk about this. How many of y'all got a job? Anybody got a job? Servants. Yeah. Be obedient to them that are your tasks, are your masters according to the flesh. In other words, I want to tell you, pick that up. Go over there. Do that. Throw that. Cut that. Clean that. Like that. Hurry up. All right. Come on. We appreciate your hard work. <laughs> with fear and trembling. Yeah. You're supposed to do it for your taskmasters with fear and trembling. Yeah. Mm. In singleness of your heart. Yeah. That's good. Why the singleness of heart? Because you're doing it under Christ. Yeah. Not with eye service. Yeah. I did my best. Mm, I kicked it. Yeah. It wouldn't move. It's too heavy for me. It's a t-shirt. Pick the t-shirt up. <laughs> Not with eye services meant for pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will doing service as to the Lord, 
and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. You know, we hear a lot, we really want to badmouth some of these preachers and talk on stuff like this. But the Bible does say if you do it and you do it as unto the Lord and you do it right, you'll be repaid the same exact way. Oh, amen. Amen. That's good. Now notice I didn't ask you to get your bill pulled out. That's later. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't go into all that mess. Okay? I'm not telling you to give me a thousand dollars right now and God's going to give you three. It doesn't say that. It actually says if you do give as unto the Lord, that he'll give you in the same manner. Amen. Right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to give you the 20 volt. No, it's not. <laughs> Call the number. Yeah. On the screen. Five, 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 six. Yeah. And pledge right now. Yeah. Your $50,000 love gift. <laughs> that will be doubled in 1892. Yeah. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Ye masters do the same thing unto them. Repay their good with good, not evil. Yes. Forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is there respect of persons with him. I don't care what level you think you are. I don't care how low, how high, how imperfect, how stupid, how, how redundant, or how, how lifted up, how modified, how tight titled and entitled you think you are. God says, listen, when I look at you people, I see you all on the same level. You know what he called every one of us? He called all of us sinners, saved by grace, bought with a price, loved by the mercy and the grace of Almighty God. But then he says, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Quit telling me you're too weak to do it. Listen, you're not supposed to be leaning on that shield. Rest in the Lord. Rest in His way. Rest on His word. Rest with His bride. Rest with His people. It is something you feel lifted up when you're in church. Yeah, in the presence of God. You're also in the presence of God's people. Yes, brother. Yes. Right? Yes. We love one another. We lift one another. People don't know how to take us when they come here. We say, we love you. And they're like, we love you. Too? Yeah. <laughs> Honey, I don't know if we should go back. They ought to maybe just start talking about love. Yeah. 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 Isn't God love? Come on. Amen. Isn't that a scripture somewhere? Yes, amen. So yeah, we love you. Might as well accept it and move on. Come on. I'm not giving you a ring. Got one. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't ask you to move in. Don't have room. <laughs> But I'm going to love you to life. Amen. Amen. He goes on. He says, put on the whole armor of God. Every bit of it from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. What is the wile? The sneaky ways, the conniving ways, the redundancies and the pressures and the trials and all the other things he tries to throw the you. Don't worry about it. Matter of fact, it even says in Proverbs, don't even worry about the, tri the trials. They're there to strengthen you. Yeah. I don't yeah. like them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We wouldn't call them a trial. Yeah. Listen to me real quick. For some of you who are going through the same thing over and over and over and over again. Uh -huh. yeah. You got thoughts you ain't got no business having. Right. You've been given into some flesh that thinks you have no business giving into. Come on. Right. And you overcome it. Listen, this is big. I can tell you. Because I'm still a man. Yeah. All those temptations, Elder, that come against us. Yeah. Whether it's anger, and we want to act out in that anger, you know, the Bible says be angry and sin, and sin not. In other words, you can be angry about something. You can stomp your feet like a two-year-old. Yeah. You can throw yourself on the floor, and then somebody's going to have to help me up. <laughs> yeah, right. You can do all those things. But don't you walk over and flick your brother in the nose. Right. <laughs> yeah. Don't you go tell your sister off what you really think of her. Amen. What if God came down and told you what he really thought of you? Ooh. Oh, yeah. No. 
Come on, George, 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 George. Jesus loves me. He loves you to straighten up. That's what he loves. <laughs> He love for you to shut that mouth and quit cussing. Come on. Come on. He love for you to stop talking about perverted thing and acting like you're going to church. Come on. Well, I love Jesus. How you doing? Come on, show my. Come on. The Bible says he hates hates sin. Yes. And all sin, you know, we want to call certain sins an abomination. The Bible calls all sin an abomination. Yes. Yeah, we pick out some because they seem disgusting. All sin should disgust you. Yeah. Yeah. Every sin. Well, he just learned. It. He's just young. He, he doesn't know not to lie. Why? You didn't raise him right? Preach it. Well, I love you. God bless you. Amen. <laughs> we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in High places. Wherefore, take under you what? The whole armor of God. The whole armor of God. That he may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done something. No. Having done a little bit. No. Having said, I've got excuses, God. No. He said, having done all to stand. We are either standing for God or we're pretending. We are either standing for God and making it all the way or we're full of excuses. And all of those excuses come down to one thing. Lustly, foolish desires. Well, there's other things. The Bible says, Pastor, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. All of them involve your flesh. Yes. Yes. You're giving in because you wanted to. You're doing it because you wanted to. Yeah. You're there because you wanted to. Yeah. You can, I don't know why they hurt me because you wanted them to. Yeah. I did not. Yeah, you did because you gave into the flesh. And that flesh always does that because the world will embrace you. The world will say they love you. The world will go and have a great time for you. Yeah. But you let one thing come between you and them and the world will slit your throat. They'll leave you to die and be like, they used to be my friend. Oh, I miss them so much. Come on. Come on. It's true. Come on. And the church walks up like, how you doing? Come on. Come on. Yeah. He found me like a dog. Give me a hug. <laughs> he like, thanks, Rover. Thank you. <laughs> Get off of your purse, thanks. Take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day. The evil day. The evil day is coming. Yeah. Oh, it's here. No, it's not. It's coming. Yeah. And when it's here, you're going to look at me and go, Pastor, it's here. And I'm going to say, now you know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now you know. Right. Yeah. What am I telling you? I'm telling you, you're strong enough to overcome that flesh. Come on. I said, you are. Yeah. You are. You are. You are. Yeah. Because our God gave us weaponry to overcome the flesh. Yeah. He said, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Amen. Yeah. Men used to wear these things and they were like, oh, men wore dresses back then too. Edumacate yourself. Edumacate. The ladies wore one set. Men were mandated to wear another one with something called breeches. Yeah. You know what we call them? Breeches. Right. You know what we call them? Pants. Pants. Come on. Yeah. Elder's Day, trousers. Come on. Right? <laughs> I, I, I'm kind of jealous, man. Some of them trousers were nice. Yeah. And hold them up with some suspenders. Yeah. Man, they were slick, too. You look at yeah. them, they just, oh, yeah. Of course, yeah. the waist were up, period. <laughs> and some of them, I watched some of them older, older movie. Who was it? Uh, Gable? Clark Gable. Clark Gable. He had it. And I'm like, man, how does Bridges get up underneath his ribs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody didn't, somebody didn't do wardrobe very well. He, 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 he so, so the men would take them, and they would take the long outer coat, yeah. which was a coat of honor, by the way. It wasn't a dress. Right. And they would so take the two sides. Okay. Yes, that's right. And they would tie, and then on this side. That's right. That way, if they had to jump, they could jump. If they had to jump over something, they could jump. If they had to kick, if they had to roll, nothing would get caught. That's right. Yes, 
So they had the breeches that came all the way down to the foot. That's right. To yeah. the top of the foot. And then they, they tied the loin. Because yeah. it's a loin cloth that covered your loin. Yeah. They were tied. Yeah. Then they go in the battle. Yeah. I got ready to preach to some men that need to go to battle. Come on. Yeah. Oh, I'm promised I'm almost done. I keep saying that. I apologize. I, I, I've only got 35 more minutes. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But they, 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 they would have their loins girt up about with truth. Amen. How much more of the truth should you have about your loins? Because when you feed it with ungodliness and unrighteousness, Ooh, notice how he connected the loin cloth with truth. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, man, you need to keep covered yeah. and appropriate yeah. and dress for battle when it's necessary. That's right. Amen. Oh, yeah. that's good. Amen. That's good. Amen. He said, and having on, having he notice it's past tense. Uh -huh. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. In other words, you ought to have that at all times. That should be on you at all times because it doesn't stop. Righteousness should be a continuation and it covers over the loin. In other words, that purity and that truth that you have abroaded yourself with, that righteousness should be covering it. Praise God. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. In other words, Today, you need to walk in truth. Come on, he prepares the footsteps yeah. of the righteous man. Yeah. Because the righteous man's footsteps and feet have been prepared yeah. with the gospel. Yes. It's right. Why are we doing this, Daddy? Because Jesus said so. Yes. And he's Come right. There's no wrong in him. Right. Why are we doing this, mommy? Because Jesus said so, sweetheart. Right. And we are walking where Jesus told us to walk. Yeah. Well, I want to do that. We don't do that because Jesus doesn't walk there. We only walk where Jesus walks. Yeah. Because he prepared his footsteps for us. He prepared. And this gospel, this gospel is the footsteps that he ordered. Yeah. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Why is it above all? Yes. Everything else was important, but above all. Uh -huh. yeah. There's an old song we used to sing. Don't sing it with me. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high uh -huh. and don't be afraid of the dark. Yes. When you walk through a storm, uh -huh. hold your head up high and don't let your dreams flow away. Yes, come on. Wait, what? What was this song? When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high, and don't be afraid yes. of the dark. Thank you. But I don't know what's in it. Yeah. Why is it you think you can walk in darkness without faith? Oh, come on. Come on, come on, come on now. Come on. Come on. When you walk yes. through a storm, yeah. hold your head up high, yes, and don't let your dreams blow away. Come on. Yeah, storms will come, but you need to keep your eyes on the prize. God, to be with you, Jesus, is my dream. That's my dream. My dream is to be where you are, Jesus. My desire, my hope, my everything. I don't care whether it's in darkness. I don't care if it's in the storm. I'm not afraid. Yes. I promise. What's he saying? He's saying above all, take the shield of faith. Where you're about to believe. Where, where no darkness, no, no, no signs of heaven or in earth which are coming. None of those signs make you tremble in fear. Only the living God, Jesus Christ, will make you be in fear. But you've got it because, and this is important. Listen to what the scripture says, not just what man quotes wrong. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith 
ye shall. Ye shall. Yes. Amen. Man, I hope. Ye shall. Come on. Come on. Oh, I pray. Ye shall. I wish. No. Don't you bring that hocus pocus garbage up in here. Ye shall. Yeah. Amen. Ye shall be able to quench. Ye shall be able to quench. You, you're going to do it. You're going to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. Not just enemies, not just saints, the wicked. All of the wicked. I don't care if you're a neighbor. I don't care if it's your boss. I don't care if you're fine. I don't care what it is that's coming against you. God said if you walk by faith, not by sight, that he is going to allow you to quench the fiery dark. Quench means to wash, to cross. To, they've got to be burning flames. I mean real danger. And you're going to quench them. You are. By doing this. Right. Yes. What's this? You already know it's that. Uh -huh. And take the helmet. The last thing. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. What do you think is pastors keep telling you to read the word of God? Read the word of God. Study the word of God. Yes. Come to the men's and the women's prayer meeting. Come to the men's and women's Bible study. Come to church and learn the word of God. Yes. But we're not done. Praying always. Yeah. With all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Yeah. Man, they people talk in tongues all the time. I just don't believe it's of God. Pray with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. I don't know if I believe it. In the Spirit. I don't know if that's what God. In the Spirit. Walk in God. Fearing God anointed. Walk in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit with prayer and supplication. Why? Because watching thereunto, you've also got to watch. It's not just the pastor on the wall that has to look. You don't just to go about your busy body just for the pastor to say, there's danger. You need to look out for the thug in the corner of the street. Come on. Watching thereunto with all perseverance yeah. and supplications yeah. for all saints. If you're just praying for you, you're out of line, you're out of order. Amen. 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 You're supposed to be praying for your brothers and sisters. You're supposed to be praying for the elders. You're supposed to be praying for the new. You're supposed to be praying for the old. You're supposed to be praying for the one that's not coming yet. Amen. Paul ends it simply. He said, listen, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, saints of all kind. I also you need to pray for me. I need you to utter my name, my voice. I need you to know I need your prayers too. Because I'm in the battlefield for my Lord. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I've been taught that I should praise him till I die. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord, for my Lord. On the battlefield for my Lord. I promised him that I would serve him till I die, and I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Amen. You on the battlefield? Come on. Come on. Amen. Come on. Yes. Come on. Sometimes you got to get off the battlefield for rest. Come on. Listen, I'm not one of those pastors who's going to beat you over the head with a club and tell you it's a it's a spoon. Come on. Yeah. I'm hitting you with this for a reason. Come on. Some of you all forget he gives his beloved rest. That does not mean death. That's right. It means rest. Rest is not walking away from God. That's right. Rest is simply saying, give me a couple weeks. Brother, I do not understand rest taking years or months. That's right. When I need rest as a pastor, you better believe when y'all better be ready to preach. Well, you didn't tell me. Well, you didn't study to show thyself approved unto God. You wait for me to tell you you're approved unto God when you're called to God. You told me you were called to God. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A woman that needeth not my be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. Come on now. He said, stand up and be accounted. Stand up and testify. Stand up and be a witness. For the Lord Jesus Christ, stand up and be a 
courageous. Come on. Can't stand up and tell the world. Come on now. Stand up and be accounted Hallelujah. for the Lord. Yes. So my eyes that I have to, but you don't have to. Amen. Oh. Yeah. I ain't preaching ages. You ain't studying longer. Come on now. I'm getting a whole other sermon. I'm going to shut up and sit down. Come on, Pastor. I love you guys. But I'm either going to love you to the life of God or you're going to remove yourself from me. That's the only way that works. Yes. I'm going to love you when you think I'm not around. I'm going to be driving by in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Oh, you ain't never come by my house. You ain't seen my new truck, have you? And this one, I'm allowed to drive places. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do whatever I've got to do to make sure you make it yes, yes. I'll do whatever I've got to to make sure your family yes. is there. Yeah. Right. I sure as God hope that you would you, do whatever you got to to make sure I get there too. Yes. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes. Come on now. Yes. Come on now. Sister, nobody play. Praise God. I love you all. You have a decision to make. Amen. Are you going to be wounded by the weaponry? Come on. Come on. Or are you going to step it up? Straighten that back. Amen. Get the dust off that feet. And say, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord, for my Lord. Yes. On the battlefield for my Lord. Yes. I promised him that I serve him till I die. And I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord, for my Lord. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I promised him that I would serve him till I die, and I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Well, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord, for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I promised him that I would serve him till I die, and I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. God bless you. Lift up your hands and praise the Lord as Brother Walker comes in the name of Jesus. Come on, give us some good praise. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody go get the kids. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We're on the battlefield, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy, your grace that you've given us, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your provision and guidance that you always direct us with. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor, for the word. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Submitted, are we consecrated? Are we dedicated? Hallelujah. Are we disciplined? Yes. Thank you, Lord. Help us, Lord. Guide us, Lord. Lead us, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. It's for, it's for, it's for, it's for the kingdom of God, amen. 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 It's to reach souls. It's to be a light into a dark world. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you for the victory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sometimes you got to praise Him in advance. Sometimes you got to yes. worship Amen. Him in the midst of, of chaos. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. There's, a light, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory, glory. We're in this. We're in this for the long haul. Kids, come up. Praise God. I hear them coming on. Here they are. 
Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. At this time, we want our, our children to come on up. All right. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in Him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song will. Will I praise him? Psalm 28, verse 7. Amen. Amen. Good job. Such an honor and privilege to give to the kingdom of God. Yes, Hallelujah. amen. Glory to God. If you will, let's say this prayer together. Amen. Upon the authority of your word, I have given and it shall be given to me. Press down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither. I bring my tithes today to your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks of amount, gifts and surprises, 
Bills pay off, debts to us, and royalties received. My whole family is saved and walking with God. Heard it tell in abundance to walk in my high favor and blessings. I am blessed going in, I am blessed going out. All that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. And it is so. Praise God. Praise God. Please come and give it to the Lord. tonight service. Hallelujah. It's going to be an awesome time come 5 o'clock. Yep. Amen. 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 We're going to have 6 o'clock service. Come with an expectancy. Hallelujah. It's always good to have an expectancy when you come to the house of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We should expect every time we're in the house of God. Amen. 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 Remember Tuesday is men's prayer. 6.30 p.m. Men, we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to pray. We're going to be the mighty men of God. Amen. Right. Right. Amen. Oh, God. And then Wednesday, don't forget, 6 o'clock prayer, 7 o'clock service. Right. Hallelujah. Here again at the Rock Family Worship Center, we're going to have an amazing time in the Lord. Yeah. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm expecting great things. Hallelujah. we got great and marvelous things ahead. Uh, don't forget this next Sunday. Uh, we're supposed to have food, fun, and fellowship. So we're going to have a good time in the world. Amen. No. Oh, I'm sorry. That, that's been changed. It's going to be Easter. Right. Sorry that we, we, we forgot that we changed that. Also, uh, at this time, we want to sing happy birthday to to Robert right now. Amen. I know it's already passed, but we, we want to we take this opportunity to sing happy birthday. Amen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Robert, happy birthday to you, oh happy birthday to you, oh happy birthday to you, may you see you keep us here every day of the year, oh happy birthday to you, oh happy birthday Oh, God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. 